coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. Gulfstream gets FAA certification for enhanced G700. Collier Trophy goes to Osiris Rex team. Wing walking biz grounded by FAA action. Welcome to Airborne Unlimited. I'm your host, Holland Lee. Let's get into today's stories. Gulfstream gets FAA certification for enhanced G700. Gulfstream has announced that the G700 has received FAA type certification. The milestone paves the way for customer deliveries. The FAA certification process also confirmed two new performance improvements for the G700, providing customers with increased flexibility and airport availability. The aircraft now boasts a balanced field length takeoff distance of 5,995 feet and a landing distance of 3,150 feet under standard ISA conditions at sea level, both shorter than initially anticipated. In September 2023, Gulfstream announced several performance enhancements for the G700, including increased range, speed, and cabin altitude. The aircraft's range has been extended to 7,750 nautical miles at Mach 0.85 or 6,650 nautical miles at Mach 0.9, an increase of 250 nautical miles at both speeds compared to original projections. The G700's maximum operating speed has also increased from Mach 0.925 to Mach 0.935, making it the fastest in the Gulfstream fleet. Furthermore, the G700's cabin altitude, already the lowest in business aviation, has been further reduced to 2,840 feet at flight level 410, providing even greater comfort for passengers. The cabin also features whisper-quiet noise levels, 20 Gulfstream panoramic oval windows, and 100% fresh, never recirculated air. After the break, Alpa says plenty of pilots in stock, no need for more. I think it's a very important thing to share the joy and love of flying. Our customers fly to remote places. They use our products to go places that are difficult to get to. Parts has been an excellent partner for Whip Air, uh, just in terms of your product support, as well as keeping an eye on the market and developing new products that meet demands. And it is that shared experience and the joy of flying that brings us all back and charges all of our batteries up. For over 30 years, the Massive Sport Plane Resource Guide has provided expert, credible information, evaluations, and critical analysis of all that the sport aviation world has to offer. The all-new Digital Sport Plane Resource Guide is coming with extensive multimedia features that are constantly updated, and even more comprehensive online guide to all things sport aviation. Available soon. www.sportplane.com Welcome back. Now let's take a trip around the patch for some shorter stories. Alpa says plenty of pilots in stock, no need for more. Alpa says they have plenty of pilots, so there's no need to change anything about the aviation system from top to bottom. They publicized the fact that, quote, the United States continues to certify more airline pilots each month than in the years prior to COVID-19, end quote, noting that the last 12 months have seen more than 11,000 ATP MEL ratings issued. Their intent is to support their stance to retain the current Part 121 mandatory retirement age of 65 years, which has been floated to see an increase to 67. FAA issues emergency AD for Bell 429 helicopters on tail rotor abrasion strip cracks. On March 29th, the FAA issued an emergency AD for owners and operators of Bell 429 helicopters. The directive, AD 2024-751, was prompted by multiple reports of tail rotor blade abrasion strip cracks, which could lead to severe imbalance, tail rotor blade failure, loss of the tail rotor gearbox, and ultimately loss of control of the helicopter. The FAA's actions follow a similar emergency AD issued by Transport Canada. 
Utilsat One Web STC on the way for Boeing 737 BizJets. Aloft Aero Architects has chosen Utilsat One Web to be their internet purveyor aboard client aircraft. As usual, they promise Utilsat's One Web will, quote, deliver high speed, low latency broadband connectivity, end quote, to customer aircraft using the Utilsat Group's low Earth orbit constellation of satellites. The resulting OneWeb service is largely comparable to Starlink's, just with a different geographical coverage area due to the company's current network growth. The deal will now see Aloft equip private Boeing business jets with a new electronically steered array terminal to interface with the OneWeb network. Astronautics takes a bow for new Bell Basics Pro package. A recent addition to the Bell Textron catalog has given Astronautics a moment in the spotlight, with their equipment included in the new Basics Pro glass cockpit retrofit kit for the 412 EP helicopter. Astronautics Corporation provides their Badger Pro Plus unit, an integrated flight display system that comes as part of a whole panel upgrade to retrofit existing Bell 412 EPs to the same flight deck seen on brand new aircraft. The upgrade gained its Supplemental Type Certificate earlier this year and can now be installed on all 412 EPs with the PT-6T 3D engine. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Let's get back to the rest of the news. Collier Trophy goes to Osiris Rex team. The National Aeronautic Association has awarded the 2023 Robert J. Collier Trophy to a NASA program that saw a prop head to an asteroid and back on the Osiris Rex mission. The mission stands for Origins, Spectral Interpretation, Resource Identification, and Security Regolith Explorer. The Robert J. Collier Trophy has been awarded annually since 1911 for the, quote, greatest achievement in aeronautics or astronautics in America with respect to improving the performance, efficiency, and safety of air or space vehicles, the value of which has been thoroughly demonstrated by actual use during the preceding year, end quote. Jim Alba, NAA board chair, said, Quote, the NAA is proud to present this year's Collier Award to the OSIRIS-REx team. Their seven-year journey to an asteroid and back will help mankind better understand the universe in which we live. The complexity of this mission and the technologies applied certainly warrant this recognition. End quote. Robert Lightfoot, president of Lockheed Martin Space, said, quote, In the true embodiment of the Collier Trophy spirit, our team, together with our partners, approached every step of OSIRIS-REx with the resolve, tenacity, and creativity necessary to execute this mission of unlocking the mysteries of our universe. End quote. And after these messages, Wing Walking Biz grounded by FAA Action. A special month is coming to Sun and Fun's 50th fly in celebration. Multi platinum singer Dylan Scott. Out here living, living my best life. Yeah. Dylan Scott with special guest Sarah Evans. Get your tickets now. Be a part of the kickoff celebration for Sun and Fun's 50th flight. Go to flysnf.org. Well, hello, fellow pilot. I'm John King. And I'm Martha King. You know, we've all had our flying lives disrupted lately. Well, King Schools is here to help you stay up to date with courses that you can access on your desktop, iPad, or iPhone. If you'd like a refresher or just want to expand your aviation horizons, we have a course for you. So head over to kingschools.com slant rusty today for details. Welcome back. Wing Walking Biz grounded by FAA Action. The FAA has revoked the license of Mike Mason of the Mason Wing Walking Academy in Sequim, Washington, effectively shutting down his business. The FAA cited a breach of safety rules as the reason. In its letter of emergency revocation of March 18, 2024, the FAA stated, quote, the administrator has determined that an emergency exists related to safety in air commerce and that the immediate action to revoke your airline transport pilot certificate is required, end quote. 
Mason stated that the FAA inspector had okayed the wing-walking flights back in 2012. The FAA also pointed out that Mason's passengers did not wear parachutes, failing to note that since they were tethered to the airframe, the deployment of a chute would likely have killed the passenger and brought down the airplane. The Mason Wing Walking Academy had been in operation for 12 years, offering thrill-seekers the opportunity to walk on the wings of a 1940 Stearman biplane while it performed aerobatic feats, charging over $1,000 for the experience. Mason conducted the flights from the private Blue Ribbon Farms Airport near Sequim and public airports around the Olympic Peninsula. However, the business faced property owner complaints at Blue Ribbon Farms and a lawsuit as well as an FAA investigation. Mason also operated out of Santa Paula, California. And that's our show for today. You can catch episodes of Airborne on YouTube, Roku, or Fire TV. Just search for Aero News or Airborne, and don't forget to follow us on social media. Thanks for watching.